hello everyone i hope everyone is safe everyone is doing well so in this video we are going to use this amazing tool called machine learning emission calculator to compute the carbon footprint of uh, our ai models that is the equivalent carbon dioxide that would be generated when we are training our machine learning models so this tool is developed by the researchers from mila and uh, element ai and this is a great tool and in this uh, video we'll also see how we can we'll see an example of computing this uh, carbon footprint when a model was trained on a local machine drawing power from a local power supply in our case uh, the let's say you know the karnataka state power supply so let's get started so everyone would be aware of the term climate change especially after the sixth ipcc assessment report which declared code red for humanity so it was released last august and there are uh, more reports coming this year so the impact associated with the global temperature of just 1.5 degree centigrade will be severe and this mark would be reached very soon somewhere around 2040 it will bring in extreme weather conditions more droughts floods forest fires some of which we have started to see already and a temperature increase of 2 degree centigrade will be reached by 2100 unless effective and decisive actions are taken right now so from this book uh, from bill gates how to avoid climate disaster uh, i read that currently the net carbon dioxide equivalent emission per year is 51 billion ton and at this point simply reducing the emission won't help us we need to get to a net zero that is zero greenhouse gases emission and this will be the only chance to avoid a climate disaster now ai being you know one of the most powerful tool for handling complex problems, it can play a big role in combating climate change as well. For instance, AI can help to use energy resources efficiently. And one such popular implementation was demonstrated by Deep like DeepMind's ML system, which was able to consistently achieve a 40% reduction in the amount of energy needed for cooling. AI can even help us to prepare for extreme weather events. You know, companies like One Concern and Jupiter are working towards such approaches. Other companies such as Nomad Go are working to uh, optimize energy consumption in building to reduce emissions. You can find more information about you know different companies were uh, you know who, which are planning or working on AI to combat climate change from this blog uh, from Robert Taos. Another interesting read would be about the role of AI in climate change uh, from this climate change AI workshop. Uh, I'll provide all the links in the videos. Um, so hopefully you know AI will help us immensely in fighting climate change and uh, as you know torch bearer of any technology we should ensure that this technology not only help us in fighting such climate change but at the same time in the quest it does not harm to the environment or add additional you know carbon footprint to the environment and we often you know when we are training these deep learning models we often overlook how much greenhouse gases are being generated when we are developing these AI algorithms and especially with the rise of deep learning the hunger for compute has already increased significantly and researchers train deep learning models uh, for days weeks and even months you know to get that uh, you know that to optimize the model or get that sweet performance from the model now uh, now that you know we have let out some context let's see how we can compute uh, this carbon footprint of uh, training AI models. Um, so before we uh, get started with the computation, let's first understand one of the terminology called CO2 equivalent or carbon dioxide equivalent. So usually we'll see all the emissions are measured in terms of carbon dioxide equivalent. So this means that these are the emissions even from other greenhouse gases that could be carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, water vapor, or chlorofluorocarbon. But since carbon dioxide is prominent, it's usually measured in terms of that. So what happens is emission from other gases are converted in terms of carbon and the measurement is done with respect to carbon, usually termed as CO2 equivalent. For instance, 1 kg of methane has a global warming potential of 28 kgs of carbon dioxide. So in this way, it's converted and measured in terms of carbon dioxide equivalent. Okay, so <clears throat> now you know. Uh, now you understand this term. So have you have you ever wondered, you know, how much of CO2 or carbon dioxide equivalent can an AI model generate? 
well uh, this paper actually highlighted this very nicely uh, this paper from MIT Amherst where it you know it, it shows the difference between you know the the carbon emitted when we train big models like transformers as compared to you know other daily activities so for uh, example here you can clearly see you'll be surprised to know that the carbon dioxide emitted by training this AI model uh, it's 56 times that of carbon produced by a uh, human in one year and it's equal to lifetime emission of five cars so that's quite huge and this I got snippet from another blog where it uh, shows mainly the uh, carbon footprint plus the cost for different transformer models and you can see you know how much it is now you know the we know that these are you know producing so much of carbon footprint but first of all in order to move towards positive direction we have to measure you know how much of this is being generated and that's the even goal of uh, the researchers who made this beautiful tool to you know publish uh, along with your papers how much of carbon you are emitting and being aware of it and so that you can take the right actions so we'll talk about this tool but uh, i came across even other tools called experiment impact tracker which you can have a look and then the code carbon uh, you know that also you can have a look at it so first uh, let's let's start with this mlco2 calculator and there's also a paper which the authors have wrote uh, it was in the climate change ai workshop quantifying the carbon emission of machine learning and there is a github repository as well and but let's let's get to the tool directly so this is the you know their web page of mlco2 impact and you can see here you know uh, there are different hardware types that you can enter and the hours of training then the different cloud providers or even if there's a private infrastructure and we'll see in the you know in few minutes how we can do for private infrastructure and the regions of compute okay and then uh, let's do it for one example. Let's say, let me take a RTX 3080 and let's say we train it for 100 hours on a Google Cloud uh, in an Asia East one region. Let's compute. And you can see it shows that the carbon emitted is 19.6 kg CO2 equivalent, which is equivalent to 79.2 km driven by a car, 9.82 kgs of coal burn or 0 0.33, you know, this uh, tree seedling sequestering carbon for 10 years now this result uh, it also shows the offset like carbon offset uh, if <clears throat> I mean Google or Amazon or uh, you know uh, what's there Google Amazon and Microsoft yeah so they they buy carbon offset so they also says that Google is already buying this much of carbon offset so you know the net emission would be here say zero but uh, you know you can publish this in you know this latex template wherever you want to publish you can even share in social media so that's how you know the tool is actually very nice and then also there is uh, sections to learn for example what is co2 and then the co2 equivalent we are talking about and then this renewable energy then what is carbon offset and so on and they also mentioned you know the things that we can do from our side to you know reduce this carbon footprint okay so this is a tool and now let's see and this also suggests you know if you see uh, if you expand this so it says uh, had this model been running on a google platform europe west 6 region instead of asia it would have been just 0 0.56 kg equivalent co2 because here you know there are more power coming from the uh, renewable sources than you know the non-renewable sources and you can see the formula to compute the uh, you know the emitted carbon is basically this the power consumed by your machine into the duration for which it's consumed into the uh, carbon produced based on the local power grid which you are connected to okay and here we choose the cloud and where it is located they you know choose this formula now let's do this you know for a private infrastructure okay so let's yeah so i think for google you know they're already having this carbon offset which i thought of. so now let's uh, you know uh, learn how to calculate this co2 equivalent 
and we will not use the tool first let's use the formula and try to compute it so uh, we'll try to calculate the co2 equivalent for any machine using the formula in the above tool and for our demo we'll consider some local machine which i have uh, with a gtx 1080 ti drawing power from the local power grid in karnataka state so we need two things one is power consumed in kilowatt hours and the carbon produced per kilowatt hours okay so for the carbon produced uh, you know per kilowatt hours so that's basically based on our local power grid so if you go to the github of this tool they also have this electricity map live electricity map link to the live electricity map where we can compute we can see how much of power is being how much of carbon is being uh, you know generated by our local power grid so let's go to the app and let's see okay, my net is quite slow so this is really nice app you know that i came across so yes so you can see there are different areas you can look into you can go by map so i have I'm going to choose India and I'm going to choose Karnataka. If I click on this, okay, yeah. So you can see it says uh, as per this time, 443 gram of CO2 equivalent per kilowatt hour is being generated. And it also gives the distribution of different sources like uh, biomass, coal, how much of the energy is coming from which kind of sources, okay. So you can see for different regions as well. So let's continue with this. So now we know, you know, it's 443 gram equivalent or it is 0 0.443 kg CO2 equivalent uh, per kilowatt hour. So this is our power consumed per kilowatt hour. Okay. Now, uh, what is the, <coughs> sorry, this is the carbon produced per kilowatt hour. Now let's compute the power consumed in kilowatt hour. And for us, it's GTX 1080 Ti. So this is uh, one, uh, you know, command which you can uh, write to see, <coughs> excuse me, the power of your GPU. So <coughs> the default power limit for this is actually 250 watt. And if when I was running the training of the model and I saw the power draw, then, you know, when it refreshes, you can see the power draw is varying, but on an average, it's above 200 it's around 250, 240 to 50 on an average. So we can say that the power draw for our GPU or power consumed is uh, 250 watt. And I have trained this model efficient at B0 for 36 hours. So, you know, you can compute the you know power consumed. Now the formula is power consumption into time into carbon produced based on the local power grid. So power consume is power draw into the time for which we are drawing the power. So for our GPU is 250 watt and we are training our model for 36 hour. So power consume is 9 kilowatt hour. And then the carbon produced per kilowatt hour for our local power grid is 0 0.443 kg CO2 equivalent. So therefore the uh, emitted you know, CO2 equivalent or the carbon footprint is 9 into 0 0.443 which comes around 4 kg equivalent of CO2. Okay, so this is our you know, uh, this is at least my, you know, the carbon footprint when I was training one of the model. Now let's do the same calculation. It's around four uh, using the same, uh, using this tool. Okay, what we did by hand, just, uh, so for me, it is 1080 Ti. And I train it for 36 hours. And for me, I am using a private infrastructure and uh, for me it's 0 0.433 you know the kg uh, kilowatt hours of co2 which we just saw from this electricity map and uh, am i buying any carbon offset or my local machine so no i'm not buying so if we compute it uh, then we will see the carbon emitted is 3.9 which we computed and because we have a zero carbon offset, you know, our net uh, emission becomes this much. So it says, yeah, 3.9 kg equivalent of CO2, which is equivalent to 15 kilometer being driven by car or nearly two kgs of coal burn. So, you know, that's actually great. And, you know, 
uh, in this way you can we can you know compute this is just i show, show the showed you the hand calculation but this tool already does everything for you so i hope this is uh, you know useful uh, to compute your carbon footprint for training ai models and so now you know uh, let's see what actions you know we can take uh, to reduce some of our carbon footprint Uh, so what are the actions you can take from your side so this uh, website already provides a lot of actions like uh, choosing your cloud provider wisely or choosing the region like as we saw that Asia Asia region you know consume you know generates more carbon footprint than the Europe West buying carbon offset and not doing grid search takes time choosing clean energy pushing for transparency but I also want to discuss few other points so one is uh, yes uh, we have to keep track of our carbon footprint uh, we have to choose our regions wisely when we're choosing cloud and you know you can also set a power limit for your gpus during training and this can be done with nvidia sma command so you have to first enable this persistence mode in nvidia and then you can set the power limit of the gpus so this one which i showed this is actually the one which i uh, and forced to a uh, power limit of 200 so if you can see this is the original one and you see the power limit is 250 the default power limit is 250 and forced power limit is 250 okay but we can uh, you know enforce it from 250 to 200 and you'll see then it become an enforced power limit is 200 how you can do we can do it so first of all enable the persistence mode so you have to do nvidia minus smi uh, minus persistent mode to one it will enable it and you can check it using this command then you have to use this uh, command nvidia minus smi minus i so after minus i the one two three zero is the gpu number so for me i'm enforcing a power limit of 200 on gpu one and you can see power limit of a gpu this 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 was set to 200 uh, watt from 251 and then you can you know check your power limit and it will be reduced okay i will send this description in the i'll add this lines in description as well so that you can read and also if you're worried about how power limit may affect actually you can read this blog and then another is using mixed precision training that is a mix of 16 bit and 32 bit uh, as and when you know need it and <clears throat> it makes your training faster and consume less memory and hence it will you know uh, reduce the carbon footprint you can further read this blog where they show example of using this mixed precision training and then obviously using pre-trained models wherever possible so yeah there are many ways these are some ways so i hope uh, this video gave you some insights so it's already there i just wanted to share so that uh, it reads to more people that such tool exists and we can make use of it and we be more aware of you know uh, this carbons and climate change and be more responsible when we are doing our part so that was the reason for this video i hope you learned something and till then uh, keep learning keep exploring neurons take care be safe bye bye